there's the old but still very popular and relevant quote the ceo says what if we invest in training and uh, the people leave and then there's a the people person saying but what if we don't and they stay <laughs> yeah so subha why is it that in startups typically and this is true of also as being a startup as well uh, why is the people function or the hr function usually built last or why is it not prioritized from the get go oh that's a good one and you know the people function is literally on fire and it's strange because what's on fire doesn't exist and that's the problem these are all people fires <laughs> i mean not people on fire but <laughs> that is actually quite interesting i mean firstly glad to hear that it's not the actual humans but how many startup fires have you had to fight no it's a quite a quite a syndrome across the space and especially in emerging tech startups i'm uh, interacting with quite a few of late and over the past few years i think the founders go in 500% 1000% with that exciting idea with that drive to build some product that doesn't exist in the market mm. and so i think at that point they uh, rush in with a set of people they know typically yeah right so they found a few people who are uh, you know following them from whatever they were doing earlier with full excitement to build something and so i get it that there is no formal people slash career development slash talent strategy Hmm. and you know we we'll talk about the many reasons for this and when does it hit a wall and what can they do about it sure yeah hi welcome to small talk with raincraft i'm subha chandra shekaran a career growth coach small talk is for current and aspiring leaders who want to level up their career and their professional lives and want to do it mindfully i'm hasita i'm a marketing consultant and i'm subhas co-host over the next 20 odd minutes we'll be talking to you about personal leadership professional growth and how to go about nurturing your career join us as we have some career lifting conversations i know the story of a group of co-founders got together very excited about making a difference in the world of hiring uh and i saw them grow in a two month period and i thought wow this is growth this is the thing that everyone wants uh and then i recently found out a couple of weeks ago that they had kind of dissolved and the founding team was no longer together right and the reason i wanted to bring this to you is because it seems to me like a people problem and sometimes i can't help but wonder were they trying to solve with conviction what was essentially a problem of values interesting and i think uh, maybe they're lucky that uh, this fire got ignited very early <laughs> true right it's a lot tougher if you've uh, started to build something and brought more people in and i think it's the whole mindset with which they jump in that hey we're supposed to be very dynamic things mm. are supposed to change every day and we're going to be scrappy and we don't want to get tied down by your processes and your structures and you know do this do that and they see the hr function as something that belongs only in large corporates mm mm-hmm. which actually kind of brings me to the whole idea of what can an hr function do in a smaller system what would you say would be a benefit so i think firstly the assumption that hey we will focus on the core and uh, as we bring in more people and as we hire them the the skill level and the people effectiveness or their capability will also grow as the company grows and that's not going to happen mm. that's not going to happen unless there is someone who is owning that growth mm mm-hmm. mm and the founder can maybe do it when it's a small group when it's maybe 5 maybe even 10 people mm. but these are typically organizations or these are uh, environments where you are doubling headcount very quickly mm mm-hmm. and uh, especially if you break into that funding space and you're funded and you you're now you are responsible to deliver you know 5x 10x growth then you are also hiring fast and you have a whole bunch of new people who didn't who weren't there when you 
jumped Started into this out, right? right yeah yeah and so who's going to own that people function because as a as founders and even that core founder minus one layer each probably have their set responsibilities by now hmm. so somebody has to help them uh, invest time in the people right but then i mean it could potentially be a counter question and uh, where i'm coming from is to say that hey i've hired a team of 10 people who are extremely driven to solve the same problems that i'm solving i'm hiring for passion i'm hiring for a certain ability to be a self starter i'm assuming that these are certain things that a lot of early stage startups especially do look for uh, but is that not enough why is that falling short within a year or so that's a good question and i think the the answer lies in the fact that you have hired them for lack of a better word as followers right mm-hmm. so they are there to follow your vision uh, your ideas your direction and unless you take the time to keep showing it to them yeah right um how are they going to know which way to go right so they may know which way to go from a pure hey i'm here to you know write code for this particular piece mm-hmm. of the product uh but what else am i expected to do because mm. you brought me in saying this is what i have to do and i'm doing it and suddenly you're expecting me to do more and more because mm. we're growing um and so there are many ways in which it hits the founder and founding team uh, or the or the top management team very hard because suddenly i hear from founders that hey you know these guys were so good and hence they came with me from my previous company but now 3 years into this and still the entire burden seems to be on me i have to wake up every morning and say where are we on this and where are we on that and who's doing what mm. and uh, you know the people just don't seem to be stepping up what more do they want like i've given them such a great start right yeah. which is where also i sometimes kind of wonder because a startup is inherently a very amorphous atmosphere right and the whole idea behind starting up is to experiment mm. and to test something and say mm. is this going to work is, is there enough market uptake for this thing that i'm building in that context don't you think having a people or a growth process and essentially then siloing people into a certain vertical or a trajectory is that not more harmful than helpful if you don't do that then you will find that there are a bunch of folks who are from their own career and individual growth perspective a little lost and meandering mm. they don't know what to take ownership for because they don't know that it's their function or mm. it's their job or uh, that doing so will get them certain rewards right i mean end of the day there's some kind of reward we're looking for right either monetary or recognition uh, right and so you'll soon find confusion about growth paths and and hence another very common symptom that i see is that founders will say my folks are not collaborating mm mm-hmm, mm mm-hmm. they're all working in silos yeah. because those silos have been created by not defining the various units right you've not defined who owns what who leads what and that if you do more what what could tomorrow look like for you yeah, yeah right not everyone wants to be doing the same thing for the next 10 years right this uh, we enter startups also to say hey this is going to challenge me and i'm going to grow and i'm going to learn so much more right so how do i know what else can i grow into mm-hmm. i i joined in uh, in coding and then they gave me some um, opportunities to run operations and i enjoyed that but i th- really think i want to stint at Uh, meeting clients and you know mm-hmm. hearing from them what our product looks and feels like right. but what is that path does it exist mm. uh, who are the people who are leading that right there's a lot to be done and in, in communication in terms of letting people know what their careers could potentially look like because uh, we are five we are 10 we are going to become 20 50 100 if not more and so what could it potentially look like and how am i going to support you as the founder of the company as somebody who's in charge of the growth trajectory how am i going to support you because knowing all of that or seeing that system getting built in some way uh, will help determine the skills that this group needs to right. step up right because otherwise the 
the employees will feel like uh, hey you're making us hustle but uh, you know i don't have the skills and every day seems like i am fighting my own fires you know right. tons of mini fires trying to figure out something because i'm not equipped to do the job right right and then the founder is still frustrated because client is seeing bugs in the software or they're not seeing great output etc yeah um, so th- the the people function must start early and i get that um, it's it's really not a priority mm. on day one right mm. but it can't be zero priority at 3 years 5 years mm. and that's the situation i'm seeing so the earlier you think about it it's like investing today for a better outcome tomorrow is that what we are yeah because see if you don't invest in supporting them on that path yeah then what are you left with people who don't know how to <laughs> do the jobs <laughs> right so yeah. uh, if you don't invest in the people function and you know create career paths create learning paths then uh, you have a problem that they're now still with you <laughs> <laughs> oh that sounds really bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> also why combinate i think has this famous saying uh, they say seven skill companies <laughs> so i think what they're trying to say is that someone who's stuck at a huh. certain baseline average if they are unable to improve then ergo they are damaging the system in not having improved i think that makes sense now mm. and therefore say today i'm a startup who's six months or a year into operations and i know i'm growing very quickly and i know i'll be hiring several other people over a period of time what are two three things that i should be looking at and i think more importantly i want to ask you is that something i should be accounting for in my funding plans is that something that i should be asking for funding for that yes i am going to invest an x amount of money into the people practice and therefore this is how i hope it will compound or i expect it to compound i think that is a big yes because <laughs> <laughs> you know when you do sit down with uh, founding teams and you realize that hey we need uh, we need someone to help us really just speak to our employees help with skill gaps even design performance management systems which are so core to figuring out who is where mm. and then finally there's no budget for it yeah yeah right so i think yeah in whatever growth that you're planning you do need to uh, plan for the training aspect of it the learning aspect of it and even for let's say organizations of our size and scale even if we have few people on our team uh, we do have to budget for online courses that they may need to take right. or certain uh, conferences webinars that they need to attend right uh, which not everything comes free those were the pandemic days <laughs> yeah no more free webinars yeah. for us right so we do we do need to budget for it and in terms of what we what you can do mm-hmm. it it's not too difficult i think firstly keep tracking for the skills that your business needs mm-hmm. like even take motley crew and marketing consulting like you know that you need designers you know that uh, you need somebody who can be client facing yeah. right like own the customer right client management uh, you know that you need somebody who can write mm-hmm. uh, so you have certain skills but also looking a little into the future okay these are the few things that i'm going to potentially offer or this is the trend in terms of clients coming my way what are the additional skills that i need right. to be future ready so today for example if a lot of your work is b2b tech mm. right then you do need to build a team that understands that right so somebody may come in as a great writer but he or she needs to be taught what that's true mm. right and how how are you going to invest in that it's you you may not and especially when you're small and growing you can't afford to say everything will be on the job learning because you want to uh, aspire for clients and who are at a higher scale and you're right. able to g- deliver at that quality so true so true so that makes a lot of sense i think sometimes the moment we say people practice perhaps we make it into this extremely big deal mm-hmm. involving policies and sops and probably it's not that right it's about just making sure that every individual is able to perform to their best potential yeah. to the extent that you are a company and are able to kind of facilitate that yeah. right you no know, that that's a good point that you brought up because hr or the people function itself there's the hr operations right which is the policies and the documents you have to have in place and a lot of templates and a, a lot of that is available off the shelf uh, payroll systems all of that 
is the easy piece to crack and i think most startups crack that piece it's mm. that's not where the trouble lies the one that needs everyone's time and energy is the career conversations and again these are career conversations and these have a zero element of feedback mm mm-hmm. right? they're very distinct from where you're giving performance feedback you're doing a review or you're giving uh, immediate feedback for work that went well or didn't go well that is very different from what i mean by a career conversation fair enough no i think also making that separation is so important because we don't want to overwhelm ourselves with too many things that seem to need to be done yeah and i think in a career conversation you know if you ask me what really it is one it's simply to have a conversation with your team member to understand from them where are they today where do they aspire to be mm. what are the things that interest them what are the questions that they have mm-hmm. what are their own concerns about their career what is their own understanding about uh, skill gaps that they have where do they need support right what would they like to be doing you know in a year from now two years from now and also teaching your people managers to have these conversations because it very easily uh, fizzles into performance feedback right and performance feedback i mean we've talked for hours about it mm. puts the other person in the defensive right and they're no longer opening up sharing that hey today i'm doing operations and here is my manager telling me five ways in which i'm doing it wrong right and i don't now have any kind of inclination or energy to tell him or her that i want to be doing client facing work next year Mm-hmm. because i'm already kind of expending so much energy just trying to defend my current yeah, position yeah, yeah yeah so the career conversation the outcome is to have uh, a good idea of what makes the person tick in terms of what kind of work excites them what are they maybe even shying away from or running away from because they they're worried they won't be good at it yeah. like you are grooming somebody to be your uh, maybe sales head equivalent right. right or to to handle all business development but they are saying no i'm kind of in i'm happy where i am and is that a comfort zone are they fearing that they don't have the skill sets for that yeah yeah so you want to just leave that conversation with a plan with an outline of uh, where they are and what are the gaps and then comes the job of saying how can i fill this skill gap right i mean there could be functional gaps so you need them to do specific courses there could be kind of behavioral soft skill gaps somebody's communication needs to be a little more on point uh, somebody needs to be a little better when talking to external partners vendors right. clients uh, somebody needs to get a little more analytical or you know in their thinking decision making right. etc um and then there is just using the various kind of development intervention somebody who's extremely important to you mm. uh, you may want to invest in some one on one coaching time for them or like we said if you're looking at future ready skills uh, you may be grooming someone in your team to let's say handle something in the ai space and that's something that even you are new to yeah yeah right so maybe you need to find some mentors outside of your organization to work with your team member it's not about making things harder for founders but just to remind them that if you let this slip away it takes us almost you know 10x effort to put things in place right, right? so it's really not about creating huge structures and processes that you don't want you don't want the bureaucracy you don't want the corporateish feel all of that i get but between yourself and whoever else is responsible for the teams uh, invest time in career conversations so that you have a road map for skilling behavioral inputs coaching mentoring that your team needs and you have a road map of what are the skills that i need for my organization and where is it going to come from yeah right because uh, that's also a great way for you to figure out what external hiring you need to do yeah yeah right so some skills are going to grow internally uh, and some skills you're going to acquire from outside and when you can't do either then you're going to outsource it to somebody Hmm. but that road map will become clearer and clearer to you only when you know the first thing what what's sitting with me already and where can i take the effort to groom that because these guys know everything else they know my product they know my right. culture they know we know each other and so 
you you want to retain those good guys who are who are already with you so that makes a lot of sense i think just simplifying it and making it so clear as to the fact that the individual's growth is the growth of the system i think that's the key that i'm taking away from this entire conversation and that it doesn't always have to begin with large baskets of different 10 things and you know culture interventions and engagement and all i think all of these pieces can obviously wait yeah. but the first priority is to just make sure that every individual in the system is best equipped i think to do more than what they probably signed up for on day 1 and i definitely think this is going to help fight some fires yeah there's the very uh, old but still very popular and relevant quote that comes in a few shapes and forms but essentially is the ceo says what if we invest in training and uh, the people leave and then there's a the people person saying that but what if we don't and they stay <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i think this is going to be the start of many many conversations so well because i think hiring retaining uh, it opens a whole pandora's box actually of conversations that can be had uh, around the subject so i look forward to that good let's see how you implement it or dev <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot for asking me these thought provoking questions about little fires everywhere that's it from us folks bye Hey small talkers, thank you for listening. We love bringing these episodes to you. So please do get on Apple or Spotify and leave us a rating or review or just follow us and help us grow the show. You can find more details about this specific episode and us in the show notes and on our website. Thanks again and bye.